Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Hints, Tips, and Tricks right here from Bridger and the Sound Strategy Network. I've had the game for quite a while now and I want to give you some help figuring out how to use the interface effectively. Now one of the best things you can do is figure out exactly how you personally want to organize all of your divisions and theaters, making things easy and quick to find because I found one of the things that slows the game down the most and makes it the most frustrating is constantly pausing and trying to figure out exactly uh, where did I put that mountain unit, what did I do with this, how did I do with that, so here's my personal organization method that has helped me a lot and you of course can take it and adapt it or tweak it however you like, it's your own personal taste. So, that having been said, let's see, you've got three different symbols that you can change, so if you have your armies, you can see you can click an army here, or you can click it in the theater box, and if you go over here, you can see this little pops out here, you can change the symbols. There are three different symbols. The default one is this looking shield here, and I use the spade for any offensive forces that are very, uh, you know, heavily armed or equipped, more than your standard infantry. So, for example, a mechanized force, or a force that includes armor as well, or perhaps a heavy infantry force that has lots of artillery packed in, like a shock army of the Soviet variety. All of those things I would put under a spade for heavy offense. Anything with this little fortress, I know that's a garrison. That's not an army that's designed to be used offensively. It's there to hold either an inv a naval invasion port uh, of importance or maybe just a resist an anti-resistance army, a military police army to hold down the enemy. Uh, so you can see how I have this set up over here. Um, also, another very, very important piece. Name your armies something appropriate so that when you hover over them over here, you can easily see what army this is. I can see, oh, that's the French border army. And even if I don't remember exactly which color of these is the Yugoslavian border, I can find it very quickly. And where's the one from Albania? Oh, there it is. And you click on it and you go there. So you can see all of these are standard infantry armies. I actually snuck an armor into this one. But for, by and large, they're infantry armies. So they have the standard shield. And then, of course, the spade here is the one that has exploitation units, tanks and mechanized. And then I have a small Rhodes garrison. I'm just, by the way, playing with the default setup in 1939. This isn't necessarily the most optimal setup for being at this part in the game. Um, and then another thing I do, if I use the, the symbols to determine what type of army it is to make it easily and quickly visually identifiable, I use the theaters to tell me where it is in geographic space. So that could be, you could even split it up and say West and East theater here if you intend to have a lot more armies in the future or you just wanted Europe to look a little better. Uh, you could have, uh, let's see, we could have the uh, mech army uh, go here and that is the Eastern... European theater. Boom. Done. And then we'd throw in this army as well. And we'd throw in this army as well. And now we've got an Eastern Europe theater, which is separate from regular Europe. Uh, so that's very valuable to just easily and quickly see geographically where these armies are. Now that does mean that when the armies move, if you decide to move your, your mech army somewhere else or you're invading across the Mediterranean and you're bringing an entire army down to uh, Central or North Africa, you do want to make sure you move the armies on here so you keep yourself up to date. And then of course I've got the Benghazi garrison holding an important port and I have these units over here who are holding this particular front and these units holding this particular front. Now there's more to this. There's another piece of this that I I do not have. This bright green one is my training army. What I've done, because if you, you may know that if you have a unit training, you can say where you want it to deploy, and then you can say which order you want to assign it to. So if I know I want all infantry to go to the French border because I'm building up on the French border, I can do that and you can see the color now matches the color of the army uh, that it's being sent to. So it will automatically deploy if we click this button and it'll automatically move right over to that border. That is very valuable. However, I have found that sometimes it's very tricky to have, okay, uh, these ones are going to the French border and I'll have another thing set up here and these ones I'm going to put over here and so these two are going to the Yugoslavian border and then by the time they're trained, I'm not I didn't want them to go there. Maybe I had a better place for them to go. So what I have taken to doing 
is assigning all of them to a single order with a single special army that I label bright green for my green, my newbies, my trainees. Uh, and I give them just a fallback order somewhere in the central part of my country. In the earlier part of the game, assuming you have enough equipment and you're doing this mostly with infantry, you can have these guys constantly exercising. And as soon as the units reach regular, you just come back here periodically and you say, oh, these guys are done. I'm just going to pop these guys off and I'll head them over to the, uh, oops, did I, yes, I did that right. Okay, so now I, I pop them off and they're heading over to the French front. And anytime I need to come back and say, oh, okay, these guys are still training, I'll leave them here. A, this gives you a subtle increase in your army experience over time. It's usually fairly small, depends on the number of divisions or men that you have training. In addition, it makes it so that you are training, but you're not training your entire armies all the time, burning through that equipment and that attrition rate. Instead, you're only training the people that just came out of your uh, of your training, and you're training them up from trained to regular. So you can see here, if this unit pops out, it goes straight into the army that I have training, and it's going to begin training as well. So all of these units, as they pop out on their own, will go here and start training, and all you have to do is come back here periodically, find the ones that are fully trained as regulars, and send them to whichever border you think needs it most. This Hints, Tips, and Tricks brought to you by Bridger. Subscribe to the channel if you want to find more, and check out the live streams. They're available at gaming.youtube.com.